First of all, I would like to explain a bit the topic because some people, after it was announced in the morning, came to me and asked, what is dimensions of prosperity? What does that mean? Baba gives, Baba uses many names for prosperity. Baba says that prosperity means the abundance of a golden age. Prosperity means the fortune that we are accumulating now. Prosperity means to become successful. And in fact, these ingredients are very much the elements that are adored and wanted in nowadays in this world. So it's very important, I understand, that we understand the spiritual dimensions of prosperity. Because if we don't grasp this new way of seeing and understanding what prosperity, what success mean, it might be that we might feel frustrated in our Brahmin life. Because Baba encourages us to live a simple life, to renounce several of the aspects of the common life, or we are also incentivated to uh, give and not so much to take. So we need to understand why this is to become prosperous. Also, before starting more deeply into the topic, I want to introduce myself because I know that uh, not many of you probably know me, though uh, I've been around quite many years. I'm Sister Luciana and I took knowledge and I am based in Brazil, in South America. I've been with Baba. This is my 25th year in Guyana and uh, service in South America started from Brazil, where we have now centers. And I share the service there with Brother Ken, that many of you know. And from Brazil, and now we have completely covered South America, so that we have Baba service happening in all the countries there. In terms of my education, I came to Baba was in the last year of my university career, and I have a degree in social science, especially in anthropology and sociology. But because those days, it was like in the beginning of the service, so it was quite different from now. And we were incentivated to go and live in the centers and dedicate ourselves and even stop working outside. So I came to live in the center eight months after I came into knowledge and I stopped working one year and a half after I came into Gyan. So in fact, my experience is all um, from the service field and not so much from my career. Though nowadays I understand that my course in anthropology and sociology have, have helped me immensely to understand human nature, people, personalities, and also to understand what the communities, what they want, and what Baba proposed to our Brahmin, Brahmin community. So if we go back to the topic, dimensions of prosperity, nowadays in the world there are five main elements that are considered the ingredients of prosperity. So it means that for someone to be fully prosperous, fully successful, fully rich, the person has to have five or at least four or three of these elements. I think that you can easily help me to figure out what are these elements. What do people in the world nowadays think that um, it's considered to be rich or to consider to be fortunate or successful. 
money, so money is the first one. No? People are valued according to their credit account, how much money they have in the bank, what kind of car, house, boat, and everything they have. Second, uh, someone said knowledge. Um, yes, let's put this word knowledge in a little bit of a different uh, wording, because when we say knowledge, we immediately think about our spiritual knowledge, and that's not what people value in today's world. But people value education in a sense, especially people value a sharp intellect. People don't mind so much if the person is living what they say. If, even if they are understanding what they say, but they value if they are very intellectual and they can say beautiful things and they can think in a very high standards. So sharp intellect, I would say. What else? Hmm? Character. I don't think that people are considered very successful nowadays because of their character. Otherwise, Brahmins would be very physically rich because we have a lot of value and character and it's not that easy for us to be recognized. But I agree that character is another kind of word, uh, the same as knowledge. Uh, I would say charisma. No? So people are valued if they have a charismatic personality, if they can impress. When they arrive, they call the attention, and people notice their presence, so they are considered valuable. No, they call the attention. They are like the center of attention. Some. Yes, beauty, physical beauty. Someone might be very budu, very innocent. But if they are beautiful, if they are pretty, they get lots of possibilities. The outside is more important than the inside. And one last aspect that is very important. Um, well, health, but nowadays people give a lot of attention to health, but as we are going to understand, health, according to Baba, is a very different thing. Even Baba, very recent, Murli Baba mentioned about what is health in our context. I would say that the fifth aspect that people valued so much in today's world is position. If you are the boss, if you are the director, if you are the chief of something, uh, you are considered like important. No, so people like to have a very important tag on their shirt or on their door because uh, that's considered like a prestigious uh, aspect. But what we are going to consider today, according to Baba's knowledge and to Baba's understanding, it will be four dimensions, four aspects of prosperity. The personal prosperity, the relationships, health, and wealth. And I want to share with you a few words about how this topic started to come into my mind to the point that uh, this year in Brazil, in our retreat place, we started a regular seminar on the dimensions of prosperity because uh, we understood that uh, people uh, needed to know to go deeper in understanding what uh, success and fortune really means. And of course, what I'm going to share with you is so, uh, it's more directed to Brahmins, and the kind of seminar that we give in Brazil is more directed to people who are not in Gyan. But anyway, there are many aspects in common, <laughs> but the idea of starting to think and to share about this topic goes much behind in time. As probably all of you know, South America is not considered the richest part of the world. And because of that, in so many our countries, the different places where Baba has centers, 
uh, people used to complain a lot, saying that they cannot get money to come to Madhuban every year, they cannot contribute to Madhuban as much as they wanted to contribute. They used to say that, well, they wanted to have beautiful centers for Baba, they wanted to buy centers for Baba, but they would not have money even to pay the rent at the end of the month. There was a lot of comments in terms of financial situation of Baba service there. And I remember that it was in 1986 Daddy Junkie came to South America. And at the end of her tour, she came to Brazil and she said uh, something that was quite obvious. Now we understand that it's something like that we should have known from the beginning, but it was something that uh, we couldn't grasp completely. And she said, well, uh, it's not that South America is poor. Everywhere that I I've gone. The nature is so bright, it's so green, it's so, I mean, it seems that you have so much abundance in all aspects. The people here are so generous, so loving, so kind, so open to Gyan. They have so much love for God. I don't think that you are poor at all. There is so much richness here. But I think that you have the mentality of being poor. So you have to change your mentality. And it was so clear to us that in fact, the countries there were so rich. The culture, the agriculture, the, the facility that we have for service, the doors are open for people to hear the knowledge, to help. People have a natural, cooperative uh, personality. And it was amazing because after she said that from the next year, more and more and more people we started to come to Madhuban and we started to bring big groups of 100 Brahmins to Madhuban and even we couldn't, under couldn't understand what happened. And Brahmins started to get jobs, better jobs, better position. And I just understood, like I can give you an example, very recently one sister from one country of South America, she moved to another country of South America. So she didn't have a permit, residence permit to work in that country. She, in the previous country, she used to be, uh, to work as uh, the cashier, the, the one that uh, cashes money at the supermarket, so she didn't have any um, education degree, and now in this new country, just because she had an open personality and because she was encouraged that you are just going to stay in this country if you get a good job, because if you don't get a job, you have to move back to your previous country. Now she is the manager director of a big international insurance company. How? Just God knows. So in this way, many possibilities of work, service, logic service, happen to many of the Brahmins that really started to be in much better position. Just because of this switch of the framework of the mentality. So I would like to share with you four aspects of each of these four personal relationships, health and wealth, which for me, in my understanding, based, based in Baba's Murlis, I understand that are like the core aspects, the essence, the root of the topic of prosperity. I must also say that just before I started to create this seminar there, uh, I read one very old Baba's Murli, it was from the year 95. And the topic of the Murli was on prosperity and Baba mentioned about these four aspects. So in fact, this main topic is not from me, but it's from Baba. And the main elements that I'm going to share with you 
uh, the churnings that I have done from this specific Baba's Murli of 95. So you can go to your books and even look for the entire Murli and you are going to recognize uh, these main points there. But Baba said, and today in the Murli today, and also Daddy Janki gave very beautiful aspects about what it means to be rich in terms of our personal spiritual development. Daddy Janki made it very clear in her class that someone who is a dependent soul is in fact someone with a very poor character. No? So we understand that the main element of someone who spiritually is prosperous is someone that only has the support of God. I will not use the word independent because in fact the word independent has double meaning. It means that we don't depend on matter or on other people, but also independent means uh, that we are independent of uh, the Brahmin family and that's not what prosperity means. Uh, in fact, uh, it's a richness, it's a sign of someone who is sensible, someone who understands the importance of interdependency. So it's not a question of being independent in that sense. So I'll use the word to have one support from Baba. And especially that's important when we notice nowadays that people are very much in need of love. And we all know that one of the main ingredients of our lives is love. Just the music that we heard just before the class, it said that the golden age is going to be created on the basis of love. So because we love love so much and because we need so much love, uh, many times we tend to take support from other people. And we might not take support from our Lokic friends or even after some time from our Lokic relatives or even we can be quite independent in terms of um, other Lokic elements like recognition or comfort. But we still very much are dependent on love that come from other Brahmins. And of course it's very important that uh, in the Brahmin family and especially in the center that we go for class and we participate in service. There is a loving atmosphere and we feel loved. But what we feel is that many Brahmins become very unbalanced in their spiritual life because instead of taking love from Baba, they start to depend on the love of the daddies, of the seniors, of other Brahmins. And if we don't learn how to come close to Baba and how to take this love and this support from Baba, it means that we will never be able to grow and mature in our Brahmin life. So this is the most fortunate aspect in someone's life, that we have one Baba and no one else. Nowadays, when we come to the centers, when we meet the Brahmin family, and um, we talk amongst each other, the main word that we say is Om Shanti. Om Shanti here, Om Shanti there, Om Shanti now, Om Shanti afterwards. I mean, we are always speaking Om Shanti. But when I came into Guyana, and especially at the time that Didi Man Mohini was alive, Didi Man Mohini had two very important slogans that she used to quote and used to mention to all of us especially because every time when we used to, it was the time to go back to our countries from Madhuban, like nowadays we say goodbye to Daddy Prakashmani, but especially to Daddy Janki. At that time we used to go to Didi Manmohini and say goodbye to her. And Didi used to ask us, Ek Baba, Dusera Nakoi? 
That means, do you have just one Baba? Do you, you don't have a second one, right? So that was the mantra. That was the slogan, that it's the main aspect of our spiritual fortune. Second aspect is that um, today in the Murli Baba said, uh, not today in the Murli, sorry, it was in the Avyakt Murli of the 17th. Baba asked all of us if we felt fortunate that we were receiving this royal love. It means that to experience love from human beings, it's good, but it's not the most royal form of love. And Baba, in the same Avyakt Murli of the 17th, mentioned about how fortunate all of you are because you are being sustained by God himself. So the second aspect of experiencing this support of Baba is to experience that we are not just depending just on one Baba, that we are receiving love from this one Baba, and that's the love that it's nurturing us, but especially that we have been sustained by Baba. And when Baba mentions about sustenance, Baba means in including the physical sustenance. We are fortunate in the moment that we feel that Baba is feeding us. Even if we live in our Lockheed homes, do we feel that the money that it's buying and cooking the meals in my home is the money that is purified by Baba, that comes with the blessing from Baba? This is so important because this is, I'm going to share more about this later when we speak about wealth, but one very important aspect that I don't know if all of you know, but a lot of attention is paid that the money that it's going for the sustenance of the centers, especially the sustenance of the service of Brahmins, like, for instance, the buying of the food and so on, comes from Baba's box, comes from money that is given by Brahmins, and not, for instance, a grant that you got from some business company or from Lockheed people. That money that you get from ent enterprises or so on, you can use for some project, some outside service, but not for the running of the expenses of Baba's home. Because success comes when this money is clean. So it's very important that we have this feeling that we are being sustained by Baba. I mean, what I'm eating, what I'm depending for my comfort, it comes from Baba. This consciousness is very, very important. And also, uh, fourth aspect that Daddy Junk mentioned in today's class, that it's quite important in terms of thinking about getting Baba support, is this aspect of not depending on f being flattered by others. You know? There are some people that they just do service when they receive recognition, when they are flattered. It's a different kind of service. We are doing it for Baba. Our fortune is being created because of our intention, because the motive that it's moving us in service. So not to become dependent on the opinion, on the praise of others. This is something that shows fortune. And especially just someone who has this ability uh, of depending on the recognition of Baba and not of human beings can be stable in their stage. Someone that depends on the acceptance or the agreement of other people, of nice words, will never be someone who is mentally stable in terms of spiritual stage. The second aspect that will show if someone is in his personal life, in his spiritual soul, 
um, someone who is fortunate is how much this person is authentic. So authenticity is one of the main ingredients of fortune. You may call out authenticity also as honesty. You may call it someone who is genuine, someone who is original, but it means that just someone who is not fake, who is not artificial, can be someone that is considered fortunate. And this is quite important because when we come into Gyan, many times we have this tendency of uh, copying others. And also one of the main obstacles that come in service is jealousy and competition. And why jealousy and competition come? Because we have not understood the authenticity of our roles. Because if we understand that each one has their own fortune, that no one can steal our fortune, and each one will just have to play their role, we would not need to compete or to be jealous of other people's positions because no one can, in fact, play our role. There is a very known saying uh, from the Sufi uh, mythology. I mean, they have many, many, many stories which uh, exemplify these aspects. And um, they have this story of someone from who was a Jewish, who left the body, died, and went to heaven. And there they meet, um, I mean, they met, in fact, one saint before meeting God. And this person was very, very afraid, thinking, uh, uh, what is God going to ask me? He's going to say, Oh, you have not been so good as David. Oh, you have not been so good as Moses. You have not been so good as this and that. And so he was quite anxious when he met this uh, saint before meeting God. And then the saint asked him, who are you? And then he mentioned his name. And then the saint said, why during the whole life you were so afraid to be you and you wanted to be always someone else? That was the main mistake that you have been, in, have had in your life, and that's why you are going to be punished by God. So, in fact, it's something that we are always very much concerned to be someone that it's not us. I remember that uh, in the beginning, I was always very spontaneous and very natural. And uh, I remember that once Sister Genti came to me and said, oh, Luciana, you have to be very careful because you are like a glass window. And so, of course, we have to be careful. I mean, it's not that we are going to shut ourselves and not, and just to be, pretend that we are something that we are not. But uh, this aspect of being spontaneous and natural, it's something that brings us fortune because people can trust us. People can have confidence in us because they see that we have just one face and not two faces. No? So authenticity means to be real, Baba says that to be real means to be royal, and to be royal means to be pure. So in fact, authenticity is connected with purity, and all of us know how purity plays a very important role in our spiritual progress. So the ones who have access to this purity, they can be considered as being rich souls. A third aspect of our personal development and personal fortune is the ability and the capacity to become vikarmajit, conqueror of the negative karmas or conqueror of sins. And uh, if we 
want to be fortunate, uh, together with becoming karmatit, it means to finish up all the karmic accounts from the past, we should stop to commit more karmic accounts. And this is such an important aspect, because many of us say about perfection, say that we want to become perfect, that Baba inspires us to be perfect, to be able to go to golden age, to be part of the rosary. And many times it escape from our consciousness that when we talk about perfection, perfection has two sides. One side is to become karmatit, but other side is to become vikarmajit. If you are just paying your debits from the past, but you are creating new karmic accounts, so when are you going to become pure? And it's just if we pay attention in these two aspects that also we can start to accumulate. Because it doesn't matter how much we accumulate if we have some holes in the soul through negative karmas, through sins, everything that we are getting from Baba is going out through these negative actions. So, in fact, someone who is very attentive to become Vikarmajit or not to do any karma that can create a stain. And Baba very often says, okay, when you come to me, I can take care of your karmic accounts from the past. But whatever you do now, you are going to pay hundredfold the negative karma that you perform. So to be a fortunate soul, it means also to pay attention on the quality of our karma, our actions, that they don't are negative and vicious anymore. And uh, the four, fourth aspect that uh, I think that it's quite important in terms of the signs of someone who is an elevated soul is generosity. Even when we understand the law of karma, we understand that the kings of Kali Yuga, they become kings because they gave a lot of charity, a lot of donation in their previous lives. So the Queen Elizabeth from England, the Queen Beatrice from Holland, and uh, all these other queens and kings that we still have nowadays in the world. And of course the Maharajas of India and so on, Nepal and other countries, they all became kings because they were great philanthropists in their previous birth. So if we understand this, and there is another aspect that Baba mentions in the Murlis when he's explaining about bhakti to us, Baba says that uh, in bhakti, when people are going th through some bad phase, through some bad omens, uh, there is a saying that if you perform charity, if you give some donation, your bad omens are removed. So even nowadays, in the last moments of Kali Yuga, generosity, donations, means uh, something that is quite important, that is quite valuable uh, for people in terms of they getting a good birth in the next uh, birth, no, a good ho home, a good uh, family, and so on. So generosity in the Brahmin life doesn't mean just uh, you to be a donator. That also is a very good sign of a Brahmin. And it's quite interesting because yesterday I was having meal with Sister Wadi from Miami. Many of you know she's a very old sister in Gyan. And we were exactly talking about this. And we were talking how in our experiences living in Baba centers, it's quite interesting that um, the ones who contribute more to Baba's Bandara are generally the ones that has, have less money. And I asked, 
um, what event. Uh, who do you think or what is your experience of uh, the ones that are more generous in the Brahmin field, the Brahmin life? Do you think that the Indians? Because we know that all the centers that have a big group of Indians, these centers look more prosperous. Is it? Have you noticed that? Uh -huh. Because the Indians are very, very um, philanthropists. No, they they have this understanding that they are creating their future through giving. But um, uh, Sister Wad is from Miami, and in Miami we have a big, big contingent of uh, people from. South America. And she said, and do you know what I've noticed also? Uh, the Guyanese people are very generous. Anyone from Guyana here? So none Guyanese in this hall. But it's quite interesting, and I'm sure that there are some other cultures that might have this tradition of being like good donors and good contributors. But especially we know that this generosity is a fact that makes the person um, a noble soul. But in the Brahmin context, it's not just the generosity in terms of financial aspects. There are other aspects of generosity that are very, very important after becoming a Brahmin. One is the generosity of thoughts and the generosity of feelings. And this we can easily see when, for instance, you see people who um, criticize very much, or people who gossip about others, or people who see the defects of others, or people who are always complaining. This is a sign of someone who is not very generous in terms of their feelings. So generosity means a big heart. So it's much more than just finances. And also a last aspect I th that I think that it's important in terms of um, the personal fortune is the power of transformation. Because many of us didn't come to Baba with a perfect personality. Many of us didn't come with very good dharna, for instance, with many, many virtues. Some did, some didn't. So this capacity to transform oneself is very important in terms of the spiritual progress. Because it means that even if you were not very successful before coming to Baba, with the power of transformation, you can become successful. And I have seen so many examples in my Brahmin life, so many examples. How through dedication and how through um, uh, determination someone really changed and became very prosperous. I'm seeing Sister Katya who lives in the center who, here with me. And she is a very good example of that and I'm sure she will not mind that I share her example it's an example of success. And um, together with me in the center, um, I had two Kumaris. One, when she came to Baba, right from the day one, she was an excellent teacher, an excellent speaker, with a charisma everyone would talk about her and pay attention on her, and her courses were uh, the best and her lectures were always applauded. But Katja was not number one in terms of giving courses and lecture. But she was very dedicated and she was always very humble. And she had this determination that she would develop. And nowadays everyone praises so much Katja's courses and lectures. It means that 
You can become that. You can create the fortune. You can develop through dedication and through determination. So the power of transformation, it's a very, very important um, tool for you to become fortunate. The second aspect that I want to share with you is in terms of relationships. Because when we come to Baba, uh, many times we think that to be fortunate in terms of relationship is to have many friends. Uh, it's a sign in Kali Yuga of someone who has uh, good relationships. But in fact, for Baba, that's not so. Someone who has many friends uh, can become an obstacle to be a good Brahmin. Because when we come into Gyan, Baba says that we have to have just one special friend and we have to be friend of everyone. So if I tend to create personal friends, I'm friend of this one, but I'm not friend of that one. I tend to create little groups and break the unity of the Brahmin family. So what are the aspects? that Baba values in terms of relationships? What are the aspects that we can say that are the signs of someone who is prosperous in terms of relationships? And I also noted down four aspects which um, are not just my journeys, but also especially from Baba's Murlis. Baba very often says that uh, to mold is to become like gold. So through that, Baba indicates very clearly that one of the main aspects of relationship is to be able to mold yourself. Because if you mold, it means that you become of high quality, of the quality of gold. It means that you have the ability of adapt yourself, of being flexible, of acceptance of the differences of the personalities, the differences of the characters, the differences of tastes, the differences of uh, likes and dislikes. So someone who is able to mold, in fact, it's a very precious ingredient in terms of uh, relationships in the Brahmin family. Second aspect is cooperation. And this specific Murli that um, Baba mentioned about prosperity, Baba said that cooperation is the main sign of someone who is prosperous in terms of relationships. Because this person who has this fortune of getting the cooperation of everyone else will be able to do much more for Baba, will be able to create the fortune of many other people. Maybe you can just look around through your thoughts and through your minds about some of the centers that you know in your area or around the world. And the difference of instruments in front of Baba service. And you will see that the ones who have this ability, this art of generating cooperation, that center flourishes and expands. The ones who con uh, want to control everything, they want to be just the ones in front of every service, they want to be in charge of everything, the service grow and expand in that center? No. Because when you get cooperation from other people, it means that you are allowing them to develop, allowing them to create their own prosperity. So it means that you are also getting your share. You are also becoming more and more prosperous and service is growing. And it's not just a question of getting cooperation from others, but also giving cooperation. And cooperation demands a quality that it's quite essential that uh, to be able to get others' cooperation, you also need to allow them to express themselves, to create. I mean, it cannot be always the way that you want. And uh, cooperation is, in fact, one of the signs of uh, 
a center or a family that it's um, fortunate. Even in the Lockick family, sometimes you see some mothers complaining that their husbands or their children don't cooperate in washing the dishes after dinner. But I'm sure if you go and visit this home, you are probably going to see that it's not the problem of the husband or the children. Most of the time, is the problem of the mother. The mother doesn't allow them to cooperate. The mother doesn't involve them in cooperation. So um, this is really important aspect. Another aspect in the Brahmin life that it's a sign of prosperity is to have closeness with the seniors. That doesn't mean that uh, you have to be having your meals every day with Daddy Junkie or Daddy Kumarka. But closeness, it means that um, you feel that you are part of them. You, it's just like Brahma Baba or Mama. None of us have met Brahma Baba or Mama, at least in this life. But if we feel that we are close to them, it means that our yoga is better, isn't it? If we don't feel close to Brahma Baba, we cannot connect with him, with Bab Dada. So to be close to Brahma Baba, it means that there is that easiness of yoga and what is a life of a Brahmin that doesn't have prosperity in terms of yoga. It's a very dry kind of life. So the same with the seniors. We have to value to come close to the seniors. It can be, of course, mainly the daddies, uh, the seniors that are considered like daddy junkie, daddy prakashamani, or other daddies, but also other level of seniors. The seniors in your area, the seniors in your country, the seniors in your center. To have this ability of respect and to understand that they were chosen by Baba. So there is one special reason about them that Baba saw. So if you are able to see that speciality also, it means that you are fortunate, isn't it? Isn't it? Because if Baba saw something in someone and you are not seeing it, it means that your vision is not the same as Baba's. And there are ways also to come close to seniors. I remember that uh, one sister from Brazil once told me that she felt, you know, she had some, like, a little bit of um, uncomfortable feeling because she said, oh, we don't have any, like, big senior here in our country. I don't feel that close of Daddy Junkie. She doesn't even know my name. She doesn't even know that I exist. I don't speak Hindi. I don't speak English, you know. How am I going to come close to her? And it was very interesting because <clears throat> we had, uh, when I came to Madhuba next time, we had teachers meeting. And it was with Daddy Junkie, and she was talking about closeness. And I asked this question to that small gathering that was with Daddy Junk. I said, Daddy, do you think that the fact that someone doesn't speak Hindi or English and someone lives very far away in Brazil or any other faraway country in the world, that can be a problem in them being close to you? And Daddy Junk just said, oh, Budu. Like, you know, of course not. <laughs> you know, it's all a question of mental attitude. And it was so beautiful because uh, Daddy asked me afterwards when the session finished, she said, is this sister here in Madhuban? I said, no, she's not here. So Daddy sent a little letter to her and a little gift when I went back to Brazil. And I remember also once coming to Madhuban and Brother Nirver called me and said, Luciana, who is this brother that s writes so many letters to Madhuban? Uh, then I told him that it was one brother, this and this and that. 
and he used to write his letters in Portuguese, so Brother Niver couldn't understand any of his letters. But Brother Niver said to me, well, when you go from Maduban back to Brazil, please come to me because I want to send a gift and a box of toli for him. So, you know, there are ways of, of coming close to the seniors. Even like, for instance, if you see Daddy Junkie walking on the courtyard, um, there is no harm to come close to her and walk together with her or say hello or say good morning or, you know, but especially Daddy will pay attention on you. If she sees that you are punctual in class, if you are listening to Murli or to her classes with a lot of attention. I mean, you know, these aspects will bring you close to the seniors. And of course, the most important aspect to be close to any senior is your honesty, to have a clean heart. It doesn't matter what you have done in your life, even if you have done, done some big mistake. If you want to be close to Baba and to a senior, tell them, open your heart, don't keep secret, don't hide anything. Because this quality of honesty and cleanliness is the main ingredient to come close to any senior. And the fourth aspect that I think that it's very essential in terms of creating relationships of high quality is to give and to get blessings. In the Brahmin culture, blessings play a very important role. We might uh, not change so much through our own effort as we change through receiving blessings from Baba, from the seniors, and from the Brahmin family. Do you feel like that? How many of you thought when you came into Gyan and you heard about uh, the Mariadas that you had to follow this, 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 this? How many of you felt, oh, this is all very easy and I can easily do that? Not many, huh? Most of you probably started to do that because somehow you got blessings from Baba and blessings from the family. And what is the method to get the blessings from them? First aspect in terms of blessing is your dharma. Because if you have good behavior in the Brahmin clan, you are entitled to receive their blessings. You are someone who is nasty, who is always creating a problem, who creates difficulty for everyone. You know, it's very difficult for people to bless you. Imagine when, imagine that uh, by any means you leave your body before destruction. And so there will be there your coffin and you are your soul is just watching from above what is happening down around your body and the Brahmins are commenting about you. What will, will they say? Oh, this Brahmin was so good. He should not have left. Oh, how is it going to be without this Brahmin? Because he or she was so essential. Oh, we are going to miss so much the classes of this Brahmin. Oh, we are going to miss the company of this Brahmin. Oh, to find other Brahmin like this one would be not so easy. And this is to get blessings from others. Or the people would be saying, and you're just looking, oh, it's so good that he has gone. He was a troublemaker. Oh, every time he was around, you know, we would be so fearful or... So what is the feelings of the Brahmins, the Brahmin family around you? So when you have this sympathy and this empathy from the family towards you, that creates a well of 
blessings. But there is also another reason for you to be entitled to receive blessings from others is when you do good service. Because in the Brahmin life, service plays a very important role. And if you are someone that succeeds in service, doesn't mean that you are important, but means that whatever service you do, you do it well. You get the blessings of everyone. Let us say you have a program and someone has to decorate the stage. Like, for instance, we had this Kumaris retreat, Kumaris Bhati, that finished yesterday. And at the end of the, the Kumaris Bhati, Sister Mira from Malaysia said, Wow, the Kumaris have organized so well the, the stage and the programs and the decoration that you Kumaris were appointed to make the decoration of the stage of uh, Harmony Hall for Diwali program. So it means that if you do something well, people trust you. And when they trust you, it means that you get their blessings. Baba says, even Baba recently in the Murli of this week, he also mentioned about it. A sign of someone who is healthy is not really someone who doesn't have any disease because it's quite impossible in today's world, in our age, when metta is completely tamopradan, that we are 100% healthy. And Baba many times in the Murli gives this example, that uh, we finish with the cat and the dog comes, and we finish with the dog and the rat comes, and we finish with the rat and the camel comes, and like that. So we finish with one disease, another disease comes, and we spend a whole lot of time and energy just curing and healing uh, the physical body. And of course, we have to do that. It's not that we are going to allow ourselves to be taken by the disease or any infirmity. But Baba gives some very clear signs of what does it mean, someone who is healthy in terms of body and in terms of mind. Baba says that the first quality for someone who can be considered to be healthy is that someone that even during any disease, this disease doesn't stop the person to follow Baba's shrimant and to do Baba's service. I can give you an example. Some time ago, one sister who was many years in Gyan, more than 10 years in Gyan, she called me, she was from a different city, and she says, uh, I went to the doctor, I have anemia, and the doctor told me that I have to eat meat. So I told the doctor that I can't eat meat. So, of course, we are Brahmins. So the doctor said, well, so you have to because you have anemia. Uh, then the doctor said to her, so maybe if you cannot eat meat, at least you can eat eggs. And then she called me and asked, do you think that I can eat eggs? I said, of course not. Even if you have anemia, you can't have. No, it means that even after 10 years in Gyan, the soul hasn't understood completely, hasn't realized. Because even if you are sick, your sickness should not distract you from Baba's principles. I mean, like, oh, I'm sick, so I cannot go to the center, so at least read the Murli at home. Oh, because I'm sick, I cannot follow this or that Mariada. No, I mean, independent of how sick we are, we have to follow Baba's disciplines. And that's a sign of a fortunate soul. And also in terms of Baba's service, how many souls we know that even when they are sick, they are still doing Baba's service. I had a very interesting experience in the month of July. I went to visit one of the centers in the north of Brazil. The teacher is even sitting here. 
And when I arrived in this place after lunch, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was because of the heat. I don't know if it was because of the tiredness of what. I started to have so much headache, so much headache. And I started to vomit and to have diarrhea, all three at the same time. And this was one o'clock in the afternoon. At three o'clock, I had a lecture in one business company. And I thought it would be impossible. I mean, I just, I didn't have any condition, any condition, because it was not just a question of feeling bad. I was pouring from the top and from behind. So I just couldn't, but I went like that. So the time for me to, to be in front, I just talked to Baba and I said, Baba, I haven't prepared the talk. I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't have any condition to say anything. You have to take it over. So I just put in the automatic pilot and I said, Baba, you have to manage. After I spoke some 20 minutes, it gave me such a desire to vomit that I couldn't continue. Because I thought that if I would say one more word, um, I don't know what could happen in front of the whole public. And so I just, in a very royal and very full of self-respect manner, I said to the public, um, just for some minutes, I'll have to interrupt my lecture. So this person, so-and-so, will continue my lecture for some minutes, and soon I'll be back. The person that I called was not prepared, so he came to the stage, <laughs> he started to say something. I went to the bathroom, I cleaned everything that I could. After five minutes, I came back and continued the lecture. So I said, Baba, thank you for your help, because, you know, like, the body was such, but this was not an obstacle for me to fulfill my duty, to fulfill my role. These people have helped to pay my ticket to go there, a ticket that normally would cost like $300. So I had to, to be there. So many times we give excuse that we cannot do Baba service because we are experiencing some sickness. So this is... Um, lack of fortune. Other aspect, <clears throat> second aspect is that health should not be an obstacle to create a bad atmosphere in the home or in the center. For instance, have you seen that when people are sick, sometimes some of them are very nice patient, patients, they are very patient patients, and some people, when they become sick, they become very nasty. They are always complaining, they are always mourning, they are always uh, creating problems and demanding and asking, you know, taking your services. So even when we are sick, we can get cooperation from people, but we should not be a burden for our family, nor we should be a burden, especially in Baba Center or in Baba Service. So this is the second sign of someone who is healthy. It is, in, it is even when they are sick, they still create a nice, a cooperative, a easy and light atmosphere. The third quality of someone who is healthy uh, is that easily they can get the blessings from others and they can heal very fast. We all saw the example of the Murli from the 17th, when Baba was on the stage with Dadi Prakashmani, and Baba was just saying to her that everyone loves you so much, that very, very soon everything will be over. So she gets the cooperation of the love of the blessings of the whole family. And Daddy Junkie always says that for us to be healthy, we have to take medicine, meditation, and blessings. 
So the third element, it is in fact to be blessed in terms of your health. And the fourth aspect that indicates that someone is fortunate in terms of health is that this person doesn't have any addiction. Because many times we think, oh, we don't have any addictions because we don't take any drugs, or we don't have any addictions because, um, you know, we have quite a healthy lifestyle. But there are some Brahmins that have some very heavy addictions. Like, for instance, there are some Brahmins that are addicted to chai. They just move on coffee and chai. They cannot meditate if they don't have chai before. I remember Brother Jagdish, he used to say, he used to, to say, no? That I wonder what is going to happen to these Brahmins near destruction that will ju just are able to meditate if they have black tea or black coffee before. This is a very heavy addiction. I'm not saying that you cannot have that. Of course you can have that. Otherwise they would not have in Madhuban. But we should not be addicted to this. I remember once Sister Mohini came to Brazil and she had one sister from North America with her. And this sister was absolutely addicted to chocolate. Everywhere, every day, every airport, she had to go and buy some chocolate. We would just look, where is this so? And she had gone somewhere to buy chocolate. Completely addicted to chocolate. Or even some aspects of food, no? If there is not some specific food, the person is not able to survive. I'm not saying that you don't have to have your diet. I even also have my diet. When I am at home or when I go to some place that I know, I say, wow, I prefer uh, brown rice than white rice. But here in Madhuban, I have to eat white rice because there is no brown rice. And it's okay. We should not be addicted. And as Brahmins, we should pay a lot of attention in terms of our lifestyle, our disciplines, in terms of eating, in terms of sleeping, and in terms of exercise. Brahmins do very little exercise. Especially the young people should do much more exercise. All Brahmins should practice one sport, should dance, should swim, or should walk, or should do hatha yoga, or should do liang kong, or tai chi, or something. Because, you know, when you are young, you can go on doing service, and moving, and action, action, action. But after 40, your body doesn't respond the same and then you are going to become a burden for other people. So it's very important that Brahmins take care of their health so that uh, they are example for others and they don't become burdens for others, paying attention on this. Also, Baba says that um, we have to um, take more attention on prevention than cure, than healing. So we should take care in terms of our sleep and our diet and so on. And this is not body consciousness, but this is to be sensible. Even many of you heard the message that Bab Dada sent to Brother Jagdish. Many of you know Brother Jagadish, how special he was. But Baba said to him, you were not very sensible because you didn't take care of your body the way that you should have taken, and now you are suffering the consequences. Baba said this in front of the whole gathering to Brother Jagdish. So um, it's better that we start to do it from now on. And last aspect is the prosperity in terms of wealth. And like Baba says, he is the lord of the poor, so very few Brahmins are very rich. Just for instance, at this moment, this morning, they are inaugurating a palace, a home, just near here, Sao Gong, that one of the Brahmins uh, from Africa has just built a palace here. No? So he's a very rich person. And it's okay, 
He's very rich, he's very fortunate, and he has been helping Baba a lot through his fortune. Yesterday also many of you uh, came to know that there was the inauguration of a new kind of hospital, kind of institute of ophthalmology, because of a very rich family from London, they gave this donation and opened this hospital for Baba. Okay, there are some exceptions, some rich Brahmins who use their fortune uh, to create more fortune and to help in Baba service. But um, how many of you could be put in this category? Majority of Brahmins are simple people middle class or even poor class. It's with difficulty that we manage to pay our bills. It's with difficulty that we come to Madhuban. And it's good that it's like that because it's a kind of protection. Because if we would have a lot of money, we could be doing wrong things <laughs> with it. It would be more possibilities to do sin because money is also one of the ways to commit sin, isn't it? So many sins in the world are committed because of wealth. So, in fact, not to have money, in a, too much money, it's a sign of protection. The other day, talking with Sister Mohini, Sister Mohini said, even in London or in New York, we don't have so much money that we can do whatever we want. If we want to change the chairs of the classroom, we have to take some month so that we can be able to change the chairs. So she was saying, you know, it's not that money is just pouring like uh, overflowing anywhere in the world. Then Sister Mohini said, even here in Madhuban, after all of you leave, don't think that there is cheap and ice cream every day here. You know, this special treat is because Madhuban is generous. Madhuban wants to please us. Madhuban wants to give us the best. But Madhuban, after we leave, also tied the, the belt. You no, know, has to go th through a limited budget because it's so much that has to be spent here. So to be wealthy in a Brahmin way, it's not to be rich, but it is, first of all, to have sufficiently for yourself, for your needs, for the needs of your lucky family, and the needs of service. It should not happen that uh, someone says, I cannot come to the Murli because I don't have the, mo the money to pay the bus. This is poverty. Because it should never happen a situation that I lack money not to fulfill my role as a Brahmin. And my role as a Brahmin, it means to fulfill Baba's Srimad, Baba's discipline, and also it's the duty of a Brahmin to help in Baba's service. Doesn't matter if it's to put in some cents or to put in some millions, but I have to cooperate. One so, <clears throat> who is a teacher, told me, this time he in Madhuban, well, um, I had money to pay for my ticket to come to Madhuban, but I didn't have sufficient money to put in Baba's Bandara. So I called Sister Mohini and I asked her, Sister Mohini, I don't have the money to put in Baba's box. Can I still go? Sister Mohini said, no, you can't go. If you don't have how to cooperate in Baba's box, you should not go. You should make effort to get the money, and then you go. So it's not that Bob is charging us. Please, I want you to understand very clearly what I want to say. It's Baba's home, it's our home, and of course, no one will be charged anything. But our attitude should be that it's our dignity, it's our honor to put in Baba's box. If come, we come, we spend water, we eat food, we get gifts, and we don't put anything, it means that we are creating more debit with Baba. Baba gives already so much, we already have so much debit with him, 
you want to increase your debit or you want to create a credit with God? I mean, this credit is never possible because even if we give and we do service and we help, Baba always will be giving more to us. But this consciousness is quite important. Second aspect in terms of wealth, I want to mention about Daddy Junk's class about four or five days ago. Daddy Junk said that whenever there is an atmosphere of harmony, of love, and of sweetness in the center, the bandara, Baba's box in that center, has more money. Do you remember that class that Daddy said? Daddy gave the example of the Indian scriptures that whenever there is anger or there is disharmony or there is <coughs> um, someone not following the principles in the center or in the Brahmin family, the close Brahmin family, the urn of nectar dries up Remember that she gave this example that came into the Murli? So, to be able to have sufficiently for Baba's service, we have to be following accurately Baba's Srimad and discipline. And we should create an atmosphere of harmony, of sweetness, of love, of family in the center. Why do we like to cooperate with Madhuban? Why we are ready to do anything that Daddy asks us to do? Why Baba in front of that very big gathering was asking, can you do this, can you put your hand and everyone? We are going to think afterwards how difficult it is. But at the moment that Baba asks, everyone is ready to sacrifice. Why? Because we receive so much love. We receive so much uh, attention. We feel special here. So the centers where the teacher create that value for the students, when the students, they feel that they are valuable, that they are special, and they are cared with love, they get chances, they get opportunities, they are ready to cooperate financially. If the teacher doesn't give time, attention, love, sweetness, spiritual sustenance, then the students are not ready to cooperate financially. And I have seen so many times that, so many times. Like for instance, I call one teacher in Brazil or in South America and they say, oh, we are having financial difficulty, we are not being able to pay, da 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 da, -da. The students here and so on. And then, next thing that comes, that happens, uh, I say, well, I'm going to Maduba next week. And the same students of that center send a lot of money to Badu Maduban, but they don't put in the bandara of that center. Have you seen that? Why? Why they send money to Maduban, but they are not ready to put money in that center? Because they don't feel sustained. They don't feel loved. And for you to sustain someone, it requires a lot of attention a lot of dedication. Don't complain that you don't have good Brahmins in your center. For you to get good Brahmins, you have to put a lot of effort. You have to give a lot of time. You have to create a lot of situations of classes, of journeys, of meetings, of get-together, of personal meeting, of... Because the souls, they need to feel that they are part, that they are getting something. Because if they feel that, then they start to create their fortune. And then it comes the third aspect. If you are not able to contribute with money, then at least inspire others to contribute. You are a mother, you don't work outside, you don't have much money. But through your example, through your dharma, through your classes, through your knowledge, through your smile, through your drishti, inspire others to give. And when they cooperate, you are also going to get your share. And this is very interesting because have you noticed that the word for Baba's box, Bandara, 
and the word for the kitchen, bandari, is very similar. It means that bandara and bandari has a lot of connection. Only the centers that uh, nurture the students with knowledge and food become prosperous. It's not just one thing. It's not just to invite students for tea and toli all the time and no knowledge and just chit chat. Not this. But it has to have knowledge and also food. The centers that don't offer, that don't cook food with attention and don't offer food daily to Baba never become prosperous. Never. Because the way to create prosperity in Baba centers and in your home is to cook with love for Baba, to offer to Baba before you eat. Even if you are not able to offer officially the food before, because let us say in your house there is someone who is not vegetarian, so you cannot offer food in your home to Baba, but you know when you eat, before eating you offer the food on your plate to Baba. So there is a great connection between Bandara and Bandari. Your wealth, your financial situation is very much connected with the way that you use the kitchen, the food, and you don't spend also food. Like if you throw food away, like the devotees, they eat each grain of rice. Do you know that in some temples, after they receive the prasad, the food that was prepared and offered to the gods, they wash the plate and they drink that water because they consider it to be very holy, very sacred. So the ones who throw food that were offered to God will need this food in the future. We cannot throw any grain of anything so we should be very careful that we don't spoil anything in Baba's home. That we don't leave some grains for years there till they become spoiled, they become rotten, and then we have to throw that. That's very bad karma. Also, to have this love that when we are nurturing the body through the food, in fact, it's the vibration, it's the love, it's the caring. Why Madhuban gives so much attention to the food and to the tolis? Is it because of a little piece of cake or sugar? But it's because the energy, the power that it's instilled inside of that food. And last aspect that I want to mention about <clears throat> this aspect of uh, wealth and financial richness is the very famous saying that to give is to receive. And it's something that we Brahmins should be reminded that um, if we don't have something, we have to give what we don't have. Because if we don't give what we don't have, we are not, never going to have. It's a spiritual law. If you don't have health, you have to give it in service. Because if you give your time and energy with your sick body to service, you are going to become healthy. See the example of Daddy Junkie. All of you know the stories of how bad is the health of Daddy Junkie. The example of virtues. If you are not a virtuous person, give your virtues, the virtues that you don't have. Try to be sweet. Make effort to be patient, even if you are not patient. If you are not patient and you don't make effort to be patient, when are you going to become patient? So you have to give. You don't like to do something, do it. Because that's the way to develop appreciation towards that. And the same with money. You don't have money, give the money that you don't have. You know, don't buy that pair of shoes. Eat less on the weekend, but give that money. It's the only way to get what you don't have at the present. Because if at your present, your situation is like that,
It's because you created in your past. If you don't change your present, how are you going to create your future? So it's very important for us to understand this spiritual law that to give is to receive and to inspire others to give, to be economical and to give to others what you have and also what you have received, what you have received from Baba, what you have received from the seniors, what you have received like Dari Prakashmani, she could have a big bedroom. She still have the same bedroom from the time of Brahma Baba. She still divides the same bedroom with her assistant, Sister Morini. So she could have an immense palace just for herself. But she knows that she has to be the example, that she sh have to share, she has to share with others that whatever comes in Baba's Bandara, it's not for her benefit, but it's for the benefit of the Yagya. So the ones who value this Yagya, the ones who help this Yagya to continue, spiritually, physically, are the ones who are creating their very beautiful and bright future. Because Baba says that knowledge is going to turn into physical wealth in golden age. So as much you understand and you practice Baba's knowledge now, more you are going to get in the future. So that's the very easy method and way to, to become prosperous now and also in the future. And of course, the sign of this is what Baba mentioned in the last Murli, the contentment, the happiness. Because if we are prosperous personally in relationships, in our health and our wealth, there is no reason for us not to become content and happy. So maybe we can leave with this thought that uh, all of us can check in this aspect. Uh, how can I improve so that I become a contented soul? How Baba suggested us to become Om Shanti. <laughs>